Hello. Uh, today we will start with a new chapter, which is called Cell Dystrophy. Again, it is not exactly the easiest topic in pathology, and probably the biggest problem is to understand what dystrophy means, what is the definition, and what is the classification. Apart from that, it is just about uh, several examples. Uh, today it will be quick, we will start with the introduction and in the next lectures we will discuss the specific dystrophies. Dystrophy is type of cell regression. It's a cell regression characterized by impaired cellular metabolism, which means that there is some, some insult that damages the cell. The insult can be congenital or acquired, it can be external or internal, but this insult uh, damages the cell. But it is not severe enough to kill the cell, but it is severe enough to impair the cellular metabolism. And it can manifest as a morphological visible storage accumulation of a substance. It can be fat, protein, water, glycogen or something else. So if some insult damages the metabolism of lipids, for example, it will be manifested as a storage of fat. Not always. A lot of uh, dystrophies, both congenital and acquired, can be functional only, without morphological correlation. But in a lot of cases, it can be visible as it can be seen as a morphological visible accumulation of a substance. Dystrophy is reversible. It's important thing, important uh, thing, and important difference from necrosis. But the cause is not always reversible. For example, if you have um, some inborn error of metabolism, there is some congenital defect, there is some congenital mutation of some enzyme, for example. So the cause is not always reversible, but the damage itself, the dystrophy, the cell dystrophy, is usually reversible. Dystrophy is the mildest form of cell regression. If the insult is severe enough, it can subsequently progress to necrosis, which is of course irreversible. Keep in mind, metabolic defect is often functional only, as I mentioned before. Not always we see some morphological correlation, not always we see some visible storage of a material. But we are pathologists. Uh, pathology is a morphological subject, so we are interested mainly in those diseases which, which are associated with the morphological visible storage of material. But from the clinical point of the view, there is a lot of very severe and, and very important disorders that can be functional only. They are marginal from the pathological point of the view, but they are definitely not marginal from the clinical point of the view. What are the causes of dystrophy? First, it can be increased intake of a physiological substance. So in this situation, there is nothing wrong with the cell. The cell is okay, but uh, the cell is overwhelmed by the increased intake of a substance and the cell simply cannot process it. The intake can be systemic or local and typical example is stagenative steatosis of liver. Uh, steatosis means uh, fat, uh, fatty change, fat infiltration. So the hepatocytes store fat from some reason. And stagenative means that it is caused by overeating, overfeeding. So in this, in this situation, there is nothing wrong. There's primarily, there is nothing wrong with hepatocytes. They are okay but they are just overwhelmed by the substance, by the increased intake of the substance. The fat is seen as a empty vacuoles because the fat is washed out by a for, for, uh, formal fixation. So those empty vacuoles that you see, they are just empty spaces where the fat used to be. Some droplets are small and multiple. Some droplets are large and the hepatocytes looks almost like an adipocyte. So in this situation, 
There is nothing wrong with the hepatocyte, but the cell is just overwhelmed by the increased intake of a physiological substance. Sometimes it can be accumulation of foreign substance. In this situation, again, there is nothing wrong with the cell, but the cell store some foreign substance and it doesn't have proper enzymes for its degradation or at least transport. Typical example is lung anthracosis. Anthracosis is a coal dust. It's a deposition of coal dust in lungs. Uh, it's very common. Basically, all of us have some sort, some degree of anthracosis. Uh, it can be microscopically and also macroscopically, grossly uh, apparent as a black pigmentation, black pigmentation in macrophages. So this is anthracosis, and again, there is nothing wrong with the macrophages, but they just cannot process, they cannot metabolize such foreign substance. And sometimes there can be a defect in metabolic pathway leading to accumulation of the substance. So in this situation, the cell is crippled. In this situation, the cell is truly damaged. There is some defect in the metabolic pathway, in some enzyme, for example, and as a consequence, the cell cannot process the specific substance, the given substance, and it starts to store it. The defect can be congenital, so it can be some congenital or inborn error of a metabolism, or it can be acquired, caused by intoxication, for example, or hypoxia. Those diseases often manifest as a lysosomal storage disorders because there is a lot of enzymes in lysosomes. So generally, uh, those old, generally a lot of uh, storage disorders are lysosomal. Typical example, hypoxic steatosis of the liver in patients with uh, chronic congestion. Chronic, chronic congestion, chronic venostasis generally leads to tissue hypoxic. It's, it can be often seen in patients with a chronic heart failure. In case of liver, it would be right-sided chronic heart failure. And if the organ is congested chronically, it means that it's also hypoxic because uh, venous blood is a blood which is poor of oxygen. And if such venous blood stagnates in the organ for a long time, the organ is even more hypoxic. So chronic venostasis of the organ, of a given organ, leads to the hypoxia. And in case of liver hypoxia, the liver cells, the hepatocytes, are damaged. And it can be manifested as a cell dystrophy, typically fat. So in chronic congestion, you can typically see a fatty, fatty, fatty change in the liver. Again, so here you can see the hyperemia. You can see that the liver sinusoids are congested with a lot of erythrocyte. And there is also a steatosis as a consequence of chronic hypoxia. Sometimes you can see a deposition storage of a substance, of endogenous substance due to its abnormal conformation. So in this case, we are talking uh, mainly about the proteins. And abnormal conformation mean, means that there is an abnormal folding of the protein. So the sequence, the primary sequence of the amino acids is normal, but there is a pathological folding of the protein. It can be congenital or it can be acquired as well. And sometimes you can see it as a deposition. Typical example is alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, which we will discuss in the next lecture. Uh, it is a disease that uh, affects mainly the liver, but not only the liver. And as I said, we will discuss it uh, in the next lecture. Or amyloidosis. Amyloidosis is a example of dystrophy as well, because there is a storage of a abnormal protein caused by the abnormal conformation of, the, of such a protein. So amyloidosis could be included as well. And last, last but not least, 
please don't forget neoplasias, tumors, especially the malignant ones, because the neoplastic cell is damaged. It's crippled cell, and especially the malignant cells, they are like crazy. And uh, very commonly, they store various substances. So very commonly, you can see a storage of a protein or fat or glycogen in a neoplastic cell. Typic uh, cells. Typical example is a clear cell carcinoma. Clear cell carcinoma got its name because the neoplastic cells are very pale, almost, almost empty, because the cytoplasm is full of glycogen, and glycogen is pale in a light microscopy. So that's why this type of carcinoma is called clear cell carcinoma, because the cells are very pale because of the storage of glycogen. Typical localization of clear cell carcinoma is uh, kidney. It's the, it's the most common primary malignancy of the kidney. Why is this stored substance harmful? Well, first of all, there is a loss of its physiological function of the stored material. Second, the storage itself is harmful because it, co it creates uh, some sort of mess. So there is some sort of, sort of mess effect of the storing substance. But also the substance can be toxic as well. So it's not just about the storage. Or subsequent metabolites of a substance can be, can be toxic. So it can be some external substance which is not toxic, but its subsequent metabolites can be harmful to the cell. As I mentioned earlier, uh, not always we can see a storage of the material. A lot of substances can be, uh, sorry, a lot of uh, disorders can be functional only. So in some situations, the substance doesn't need to be stored. It can be just lacking. Or the, ab there, the abnormal substance can be toxic even without its storage. So it's not always about some visible storage of the material. How do we classify these trophies? First, we can classify them according to the type of the substance. So we can have dis disorders of protein metabolism, lipid metabolism, disorders of sugars, which means glycates, glycoproteins, and uh, mucine metabolism, because mucine is a glycoprotein as well. We can have disorders of water metabolism, such as uh, edema of the cell or dehydration, and disorders of electrolytes. And we will discuss those sub subtypes, those, um, those uh, subclasses in the next lecture. We can classify them according to the cellular compartment. Uh, the problem can be on the level of lysosomes, which is very common, as I mentioned before. It can be on the level of perox peroxisomes. There is a lot of uh, congenital errors of uh, peroxisomes, peroxisomal uh, enzymes. The problem can be in mitochondria, in rough endoplasmatic reticulum, and so on. And as I said, as I mentioned before, don't forget that the accumulation can be extracellular as well. So the accumulation can be intracellular or extracellular. Sometimes we can see combination of both. Typical example is atherosclerosis, because I will discuss it uh, later. But in atherosclerosis, you can see a storage of the fat uh, intracellular in the macrophages, in the intima of the arteries but also there is a deposition of the fat extracellular there is a lipid a lipid core typical example of extracellular accumulation is also amyloidosis as i mentioned before amyloid is typically stored extracellular and it is apparent as a eosinophilic amorphous material as you can see it here so there there's such eosinophilic material between the hepatocytes and the residual hepatocytes die out because of the deposition of amyloid. We can classify these trophies according to the size of the molecule. 
those diseases that are that are associated with the morphological visible storage of some material they are usual disorders of larger complex molecules and as i said they are often lysosomal usually they are chronic with long-term course disorders of small molecules they are very often congenital and very often they are functional only without morphological correlation and they resemble uh, intoxication or infection or sepsis because usually they lead to acute or subacute intoxication by the metabolite the symptoms are often manifest in a small infants and as i said they can mimic infection sepsis or intoxication uh, you can see uh, symptoms such as uh, coma vomiting liver failure metabolic acidosis and so on Typical example is uh, or are disorders of amino acids or organic acidurias. Uh, just small side note uh, about the lysosomes. Uh, the lysosomes ensure degradation of both proper parts of the cell, which is called autophagy, autophagy and degradation of external molecules that enter the cell by phagocytosis or by other mechanisms such as endocytosis and this is called heterophagy and in case of lysosomal storage disorders there is of course uh, accumulation of the given substance which which is uh, which is affected this is called primary accumulation but the storage of the substance subsequently impairs the physiological autophagy of the other substances as well, which is called secondary accumulation. So secondary, subsequently, the physiological autophagy of the other normal substances is impaired as well, because the lysosomes cannot work properly, pro properly because they are stuffed with the primary substance. And last but not least, what affects the clinical presentation of lysosomal disorders? Because not all the patients have the same symptoms. Well, first of all, there is a different amount of the substance in individual tissues. tissues. For example, mucopolysaccharidosis. Mucopolysaccharidosis is a congenital inborn error of uh, metabolism of glycosaminoglycans and such disease usually manifest especially in subcutis, in heart and in musculoskeletal system because physiologically there is a lot of glycosaminoglycans. Also, some organs are rich in phagocytic cells such as macrophages because there is a lot of lysosomes a lot of lysosomal enzymes in macrophages. So, organs which are rich in macrophages and other phagocytic cells they are usually quite severely affected, such as liver or spleen. And also, the clinical presentation depends on the degree of residual activity of the impaired enzyme. In, in Maybe in the most of the cases, it's not 100% or zero. Usually, there is some level, some degree of residual activity of the impaired enzyme, and it affects the clinical presentation. If there is a very low or even null activity, it is usually a severe disease that manifests as an infantile form. The less severe disease usually manifests as adult form, but it is not 100% rule. So, thank you very much for the attention. It was a brief introduction and uh, see you again in the next lecture in which we will describe the disorders of the specific substances such as fat, glycogen, proteins and many others. Have a nice day.